Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting of Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee on the 21st of March 2024. Um, just to remind everybody, this is being live streamed. It's being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, first point, apologies, and we have had apologies from Councillor Claymore. Does anybody know of any other apologies, please? Oh, I just need to leave at um, 7 o'clock, so I just make that. Make Thank you. That. So no further apologies. Item two then, minutes of the previous meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes and is anybody willing to propose them? Councillor Clark, seconder. Councillor Price, all those in favour? Thank you. Item three then, declarations of interest. Can I ask if anyone has any interest they need to declare for tonight? No, quiet. That's good. Um, item four, update from the chair. Um, you, you will have been circulated a member briefing concerning an exempt meta, matter that we'll pick up at the um, end of the meeting when the session is closed to the public. Um, item five, responses to reports to the ISEG scrutiny committee. There are none. Item six, Consideration of matters referred to ISAG Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. And we have an update that's been circulated with the agenda for an item referred to the committee in February last year around improving water quality within the rivers in Tamworth. It was agreed at the full council meeting to um, ask scrutiny to look into this matter and engage with the local partners, environmental bodies and the utility providers to develop a broader approach to improving water quality in the rivers in Tamworth. Um, our, I'm asking if the committee are happy for this to be added to the work plan for the next municipal year when we could invite somebody along from the water, the Trent, Trent Water Rivers Trust to talk about the issue. Is that, are people happy to take that forward? Yeah, everybody happy? Yeah, that's fine. Good, we have an agreement on that. Thank you very much. So item seven is our quarterly dual stream recycling update. And we welcome Steve G and Victoria Woodhouse who are here to discuss the report. If I can pass over to Steve, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just for the title of the report, with it being the recycling, we did move it across to operations in general because we obviously moved away from the uh, earlier issues of the recycling scheme. I have been asked to be brief today, so I will just um, come up with the main points from the service as, as, as we're achieving at the moment. Uh, the good news is the service is still in a really positive place. Um, I'd hope we aren't having too many complaints as members or or officers, um, that we are in a genuinely quite a good place with the Joint Ways Service. Um, some of the data, operational performance, we do measure ourselves on the number of misbins per thousand each month. Um, it did increase to 370 uh, recently, which is an increase against an average of 326 in the previous year. Um, what I would caveat that with is that we had some record low figures last year. Um, so we had a record low figure in November. And therefore, if you do peak in terms of performance, I won't say you slip back, but the figures won't be quite as positive. It's still a very, very acceptable rate. Um, and since it rose, the team has actually been working to uh, downgrade uh, to, to get the figures back down again. Um, we measured ourselves by complaints. Um, that was low at two per month against an average of 2.4 in the previous year. So the number of complaints we are getting is reflecting the service that we're providing. Um, resident participation, still still good. The vast, vast majority, 99% uh, of residents do engage with the service. Um, I will make reference to the Greenway service, because the Greenway service obviously brings in a fair amount of income for us. Um, last year, we was 44,085 residents signed up to the Greenway service, 35% of those in Tamworth. Uh, to date this year, my figures are now a week out, so they will have changed slightly, but it's just over 29,000 people that have signed up. That's probably around about in line where it should be. And my apologies, I haven't got the split between Tamworth and Litchfield. What we are doing is we're working on some software that will actually start to be able to give us those reports. Um, 
but again participation's pretty good um, and the green waste it does look like it'll be a good growing gear this year with how wet it's been um, I will mention for those that maybe have missed it at some point the residents are now able to sign up by direct debit or traditional card payments so we are now in a, a position where there is increased residents for everyone across the Tamworth uh, and the Litchfield area uh, contaminated bins, that's still a positive, um, down at 1,279 per month versus an average of uh, 1,488 the previous year. Can't stress how important it is that we get quality bins and the contamination stays at a low level because contamination equals loads getting rejected equals big costs. Um, I generally work three and a half thousand pound per load. Uh, the good news is we haven't had a load rejected since. It's been over a year now, and I'll touch wood, but long may it stay that way. That is a really, really good place compared to where we were with the single stream service before the blue bags. Um, tonnage performance. Um, what I did want to make reference to, and it almost seems late because I'm talking about Christmas last year. In fairness, we're also now starting to talk about Christmas next year. Um, but the last presentation, we hadn't got the figures for the... Um, for the Christmas period. Uh, we have the two busiest weeks of the year, uh, which we, we got 164 tonnes of DMR, which is the plastic, the glass and the cans, and we did 252 tonnes of fibre uh, average per week on that. On their own, those figures don't mean anything, but just to give you a, a, a concept of what that actually does mean to the operations, that's a 54% increase in DMR and a 47% increase on fibre. Uh, against a normal week so when we have a push over the Christmas period that just highlights just how busy it does get um, any operation that's got a 50% increase is, is massive um, overall tonnages at quarter three so recycling percentages uh, the joint waste service is at 43.51% uh, Tamworth is at 3861 we have had conversations previously. The quarter three figures tend to be slightly higher because it's still got the green waste in. Quarter four tends to not have as much green waste in, um, basically due to it being winter. Um, overall trend is still a small uh, drop in recycling rates across the county as, as well as across the joint waste service. Um, that is something that we all need to work towards to combat, which we, we, we have touched on before. Um, I'll touch on the financials if I can. Um, we're still looking on course for around about a £40,000 overspend for the joint way service at the end of the financial year. Um, still plenty of time for those figures to change when the income figures change, depending on the recycling tonnage that, uh, that we bring in. But I've got to be truthful, a £40,000 overspend against a net expenditure of £9 million and an net expenditure free in, well, just under three and a half million isn't overly concerning. Um, we have met with Tamworth's um, finance individual, the 151 officer, to start having discussions about budgets for future years. The reality is things aren't going to get any cheaper, but if we can preempt those likely rises, then financially we can all we can all try to be in a, a strong place. Um, I have really breezed over that because I was asked to only touch on the main points. What I will touch on before I, um, we, we move on, just to keep uh, members and, um, and officers up to speed, is the various projects we've got going on. They are listed in the report. Those that I would like to make reference to is we are looking at the long-term strategy for the joint waste service, obviously influenced by simple recycling and extended producer responsibility. And all the other exciting stuff um, but what we are doing is we're starting to look at what our plans can be for the next five ten years we are planning to get a group together that will invite members from, um, and, and representatives across party from from both councils to try to find the, the way forward for the service moving you know for the, for the future for the next five and ten years so we will be tying up with Andrew or Andrew's replacement uh, to get that in place over the next couple of months um, other major things that are going on, and we have shared the information, we are about to go to tender for fleet. The fleet is, put politely, 
at the back end of its life, shall we say. Um, the tender we are hoping will go out um, realistically in May. We will be coming out to get papers wrote to actually get authorisation to award that tender once uh, once we've received back and, and to get permission to, to do that. To give you an idea of the scale of it, it's probably the big well, it is the biggest contract we've got. We're ex anticipating a a total value of the contract of around about eleven and a half to twelve million. So it is big sums of money. Um, but rest assured, we are doing. Well, we've basically a lot of financial acumen that's coming in. There's a lot of a lot of thought and a lot of a process going in to ensure that we get the best value that we can for uh, for both authorities. Um, I know it's been brought up before, so just to touch on the options of alternative fuels, we are doing a paper and we are trying to find a way to self fund HVO, which would reduce your carbon footprint by around about ninety four, uh, by around about ninety percent. Um, I would hope to bring a paper to you next meeting if that's able to, to give you an update on that. Um, and the only other thing to mention, the recycling campaign that has um, Litchfield District Council put together, that Tamworth are more than welcome to, well, I can't say more than welcome, are joining in with, is looking to be launched in May. It's an absolute cracking campaign that we should get to, um, get behind. Um, to, it's okay, it, it wasn't me, so I'll take that. Um, to give you an idea, to, to give you an idea of how successful now, how big this campaign could be, the rest of the Staffordshire all parties have got a completely behind it, and we have offered it free of charge to them. We've also got interest from around about 60 councils around the country that want to actually pay a small amount for the for the product. So we have got a recycling campaign, which is quite exciting, and. I'd say better than anything I've seen from RAP in the past. And the good news is, um, Andrew, this one's for yourself as well, we did say we're going to get the um, recycling campaign funded by a sponsorship by using the company. We have now bought in enough to cover the campaign and a little bit more. So we've got a campaign that we'll be able to deliver for free. Uh, I say that reservedly because it takes quite a lot of resource, resource to deliver successfully. But we've got a, a campaign that... Oh, a temp fight where I think is award winning and that will actually start to spread out across the country. That's a really good news story. Um, that's the end of my update. I'm happy to take any questions about where we are. Thank you for that, Steve. As always, very comprehensive report and um, thank you for advising that the, um, the project is just ready to go out because We've talked a lot about getting the message out there and um, making sure that people know what's happening. It, it is quite concerning that those recycling rates are going down and, it, and it, uh, it will only be by highlighting it and getting that message out there that we hopefully can turn it around and, and hopefully on the back of that, as we've said before, we can maybe do something in the schools and try and bring this... Um, bring this forward. Has anybody got any comments they would like to make? Oh, see, these reports are so good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take that as a positive because there are other times in operations when you turn away, it's perhaps not as, uh, as pretty. One thing from myself, um, uh, I'm sure it's been said lots of times to him already, but Andrew's obviously moving on. Um, so it's just a thank you from everyone involved in the, the Joint Wire Service. Uh, although we won't take the credit for it, and I'll say it's only part of the team, it was Andrew's vision and Andrew's push that actually made it happen. So I think we actually became, what was it, 15 years ago, Vicky? Where we became the... 14, sorry I'm ageing you all. <laughs> where we became the first the first in-house joined up waste service in the country. And I do think genuinely just thank you, Andrew, for that. Thanks very much for that. It, it, it does help the economies of scale, doesn't it? And if we can join up with others on, even if it's just the, the project, but maybe, you know, going forward, we should be looking at um, spreading out a bit further and seeing where we can go. But thank you once again for all those reports we've had all year. They have been fabulous and they were well well appreciated. And sorry for the, um, the harshness we gave you over the fleet and whether it could be electric or this or that or the other. And, you know, would you... Your your explanations for it, you know, told us exactly where, well, what the problems were and why we couldn't do something straight away. Thank you, Chair. It's why it's 
That's why they're paying me. Thank you. <laughs>Okay, I'll, I'll briefly introduce before handing over to uh, to the, as I always say, expert. So, um, obviously, this committee is aware that we, and I can't believe it's been a year already, <laughs> um, we delegated uh, to this committee to look at the, um, the annual refresh of the Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan. Um, and yes, it's been a year already, and in the report, um, we're measuring outcomes and uh, looking at the uh, next um, the next few, well, the next year, uh, until somebody's sat here doing it again. So um, um, I will hand over to you to uh, to carry on with that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Summers. Yes, um, I'm obviously um, myself and Chief Inspector Rob Neeson are here this evening. Um, uh, we, we will go through that report, and I don't know whether you want to ask questions as, as you, uh, for each priority or you want to leave questions to the end chair. That's up to you. But uh, let's see if anybody yep. has a <laughs> ambition to come in. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the purpose of the report was just to endorse the 2024 annual refresh of the Community Safety Plan. The Community Safety Plan is a three year rolling plan. Uh, based on a strategic community safety assessment of priorities in Tamworth. Um, the priorities set for 2023 are shown in the report, antisocial behaviour, community cohesion, um, including preventing radicalisation, exploitation and hate crime, domestic abuse, including stalking and harassment, drug-related crime and harm, including the prevention of exploitation of young people, uh, also known as county lines, um, public place and serious violence, including violence against intim intimidation of women and girls, vehicle crime and vulnerable persons, which is the prevention of crime at harm sorry, to persons at risk of criminal exploitation. The community safety strategic assessment is just updated or refreshed every year. Um, we have been waiting for the draft. The draft did come into my inbox this morning, uh, so we'll be having a look at it, but there's no indication that those priorities across Staffordshire and certainly the ones for Tamworth have not changed for the next couple of years. Um, so there's no fundamental need to change anything within the plan. Um, we've, we still have from the Staffordshire Commissioner's Office um, £61,394 per year. Um, for community safety um, projects. Um, that was guaranteed through the current Commissioner Ben Adams until March 2025. So we've, 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 we've been able to commission things for three years. Um, and obviously, um, after 2025, we'll know when, the new, when, when a new or existing Commissioner is still in office after the current elections. So you'll see, I've just briefly outlined there what some of the projects we've actually commissioned through LDF. Um, we have an engagement, youth engagement worker. We um, commissioned Better Way Recovery, which is a peer support alcohol. We have a fun club hub. We've um, sponsored and looked at grants for Tamworth Street Angels. We contribute to the senior licensing officer for um, Town Centre um, licensing and the responsible bodies group. And there's then there's a surplus amount that we use for partnership activities so that might be specialist things around like the holocaust memorial we did something we actually done events in the town center attached to our own events so uh, there are priorities antisocial behavior uh, there's some key headlines there notably our neighborhood impact team are in place 
we have an environmental crime officer in post um, and we've had some uh, successes with our deployable cameras. Um, the police data is there that the um, Chief Inspector and Inspector put together for us. It shows a steady decline in ASB over three years. Um, and also some of the, the areas of hotspot. Of note, obviously the town centre looks like it's still a hotspot for ASB, but you know, there's a very smaller population in the town centre, which is then obviously quite often related to the nighttime economy, which shows it as more of a hotspot area. But again, that's, that's decreasing, Rob. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that hotspot map is there. Um, my copy doesn't say that there are figures in there for community protection notice warnings and some of the enforcement that we've done and a case study of working together where we successfully, working with the police um, and our housing teams, uh, managed to um, actually get a criminal behaviour order on a person who was actually creating a lot of concern within one area of Tamworth. So that's something that's been successful for us. Um, community cohesion, um, we've took a strategic approach to um, persons seeking asylum, um, looking at support and uh, work with some of the asylum seekers um, through government funding. We've um, got the Armed Forces Covenant in place, um, Holocaust Memorial events took place, and we've got um, other things in there from Prevent, United Staffordshire Against Crimes, Crimes of Hate, who are the county service. Toolbox talks with street scene staff to recognise extremist signs and symbols so that they can report in and actually we can monitor concerns. And we've also got some um, funding through UK Shared Prosperity and um, Comp Funding, which is the COVID outbreak management fund. Domestic abuse, um, we've, we work with New Era Victim Service and some statistics in there. New Era are the County Commission Service um, and we've, we've got um, continue to have multi-agency meetings around high-risk domestic abuse victims on Marrick, which I chair, Rob chairs, um, and, and Stuart Coleman, the inspector chair. So that's actually looking after those at risk, high-risk domestic abuse victims. We're also joining in with New Era across the county to make sure that we actually take part in and encourage the reporting of domestic abuse. And on there is also police reported domestic abuse which is a small increase in the last 12 months, um, not considered significant. Um, but there are obviously the more successes we get through actually mark marketing those services and actually promoting people to report it, you may end up with a higher proportion of reports. Um, Drug-related crime and harm. We have a process for drugs, substance, drug and substance issues with, with our housing teams. We have support services in place um, and we attend um, county multi-agency meetings uh, with the police and there is commission services through Staffordshire Commissioner's Office. There is a case study there of working with housing teams, the police and ourselves around um, eventually the family were unfortunately evicted but it, it was a, a teamwork that came across there. The public place and serious violence, um, there we have um, support for street angels in the town centre, we have safer nights, multi-agency support projects, the police do encourage and work with our licensing teams and what I like to call super safer nights where we have a fair amount of agencies in the town centre um, with the street angels and our um, um, safety partnership gazebo. We also promote those Ask Angela campaigns with, with our licensed premises. The pub watch scheme is in place through PAPSIS and we have a, we had knife awareness, uh, crime awareness talks in five schools, um, which was linked to the um, street um, knife angel in Litchfield and there's also three knife bins in place. Um, you'll see there the police data on, on, on the violence and the next one is vehicle crime. That's obviously a lot down to the police. Um, motorbikes, I think, probably continue to be an issue throughout the town on the cycleways, uh, but there are information and actions in place for that. Um, we have community safety promotion, promotional items that we use for events. Uh, a nuisance vehicle public space protection order was renewed. Um, and the police will, I'm sure that the Chief Inspector will, if there's a 
talk about the successful arrests and Operation Bormus, which is a regional operation to deter and detect high vehicle, high value vehicles. Then the police data again is there on that one. The priority vulnerable persons um, of Tamworth Vulnerability Partnership um, has been reviewed and is the prime multi-agency for agencies to come together. Our weekly meetings continue. We've got the reason for referrals in there, the largest being sort of housing concerns, um, which we obviously have the housing teams that attend. We have domestic abuse practitioners attend and our safeguarding and social services. There are other things there. We have a wellbeing partnership um, and we support Better Way Recovery, who are say a, a peer mentoring. And on there's a, a successful um, report from case for a case study from Better Way Recovery. Um, we also continue to do our debt and generalist, generalist advice, dementia friends, and a grant for Dilemma, who are a new charity to support families and friends of loved ones with gambling and other addiction. Um, Staffordshire Fire and Rescue also work with us. They do their home risk visits. Um, there's been 2,316 in Tamworth last year, um, and they continue to do the Safe, Town, um, safe and Sound projects. Um, there is a case study in there of a vulnerable person. So future plans we'll review. We've looked at the work plan. We've got the work plan ongoing, continue to work with our partners um, and hope that's is sufficient. I'm sure we'll take questions or if there's anything else, Rob. And no, I, suppose, I suppose the only thing I would add is in relation to, to problem solving approach that, that we now take. So... Uh, Joe, thank you. You've already mentioned uh, some of those aspects. Within all this, there will be always be a problem-solving approach that's led by um, uh, a dedicated problem solver now that links in all relevant agencies or organisations to try and work out what the root co cause of those issues are and trying to deal with them more proactively. So as well as uh, CBOs, we've just been, I think, the first in certainly in the county to. Uh, have a youth injunction uh, served so some really good in innovative and hard work goes into trying to solve these problems and you'll see from the data it where there's a spike um there's a spike for a little while and then hopefully that's reduced due to us tackling it effectively it just takes a while to get those processes in place and then we see that reduction so uh, the doc clearly shows some some really good significant decreases in, in the relevant areas we're open to questions do you want to come in councillor summers yeah if i may um ju just to say uh to committee that this um this is just a, a minutiae of the work that it goes on in, in Tamworth Borough Council. I mean, th this this is, just shows you how much happens in the background between the council, the police, and the voluntary sector. Um, the amount we do, and it's all joined up. It's all you know, good work that's been done that is often not shouted about, and people don't realise is happening. Um, and I mean, particular praise to the police for Operation Bournemouth because you can see the results of that. They've been, you've been you know, a heck of a lot better, at, you know, communicating that out to people and saying, "Look, what we've done. We've got these people in front of the courts." Um, you know, that that's been absolutely amazing. And I, I, I couldn't believe some stick I saw when um, I think there was something ending, ending with a chase in Ankerside um that ended up at anchor side and the amount of uh, police that had been involved in that to, to capture those uh, those vehicle um thieves but i'm just thinking well you can't have it both ways you know that you you put in a lot of resource into where it's needed and and you've only got so much resource and you're doing a fantastic job with it and you don't often get the praise you deserve so thank you um and and hopefully it's proving a huge deterrent because we are being picked on hugely in Tamworth because it's a nice it's nice easy pickings to just drive off and uh, and go back to uh, well let's say Birmingham and, <laughs> and and take the cars there to be dealt with but uh, yeah so so thank you you're doing a fantastic job and, and our voluntary community sector are doing a brilliant job as well and I know aside from grants we've been giving as an organization councillors have chosen to give and uh, chosen to give their uh, money uh, from councillor grants to these organizations as well um, and of course we've got community impact officers we've just um, started up as well um, they, they are working 
um, for the better good as well. It's all very much joined up and working amazingly. So I just want to thank you because it's probably my last opportunity. Thank you for the work, very hard work that you've all been doing. It's uh, it's it's amazing stuff, and and I encourage everybody to look at this report and see because it, it it shows everything that's been. Well, I say everything. <laughs> It gives an idea of what's going on. What happens behind those figures, though, is the remarkable work. So thank you. Grateful for your comments. Uh, some, some excellent. We've got some really good relationships in Tamworth that we should be proud of. So thanks to everyone. Thank you, Chair. Given this is my sort of last meeting, if you just indulge me, I think from the time I've been here, you know, sort of over twenty years. We've always had a healthy community safety partnership. Um, we're not big enough to do things by ourselves in, in lots of areas, and this is one area where we, we have really developed it. But I think it's certainly over the last sort of seven years, this has really developed into something that is quite special. Um, very strong relationships, departments within the organisation that talk to each other, bodies outside the organisation that talk and cooperate with each other. So as, as Councillor Summers has said, you know, this is really a, it's a success story, but it isn't one that we promote um, because this is what, this is what the organisation does. And I think from, from me, it's just really pleasing to see that we've still got the same organisations around the table with the same level of commitment, uh, given the whole public sector cuts and everything else. But we actually make this work because it's probably the right thing to do. And I just think it's testament to the to uh, to the partnership that actually it's delivering results. So it's yeah, you know, so it's, it's, it's a big thank you from uh, from me really. So yeah, it's great. Thank you, Councillor Cl uh, Clark. Um, just thank you very much for that report. Um, I absolutely agree with what you were saying, Councillor Summers. It's it's something that we don't shout about enough. Um, so thank you as well, like for the work you've done over the year. Um, the report was absolutely incredible, as particularly the work on engagement. Because um, we see in the ONS the amount of sort of unreported crime, so the work that you've done to engage with communities and build those bridges, it's it's really really good. So please pass thanks on to everyone who was involved, and again, thank you, Councillor Summers. Hi, yeah. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to echo the, the comments of the previous speakers. I think that in Tamworth we have a fantastic police force. Certainly the officers, men and women who I've met and worked with are absolutely first class and I congratulate you and uh, the whole force on, on the quality of the people who work for the police in and around Tamworth. Um, I think it's quite astonishing and they are remarkable people. However, yeah. one of the things, there you go, <laughs> I thought was it downside. When I talk to people about Tamworth, uh, one of the, the, um, the questions, I, you never ask people what's right with Tamworth because uh, <laughs> they, they, you'll get the very same justice. But um, you, ever, you ask the question, what's wrong? What can we do better? What's the problem? What's the, what's the thing? And one of the things that I get whenever I ask that question is, why haven't we got a police station? Now, I know we've covered this before. We've spoken about this before. And I know the Police and Crime Commissioner is not at all uh, favourable to establishing a police station or a police hub or anything of that description. I just wonder if you could explain to me and perhaps to those people who say they will not come into the town late at night because they fear um, the streets are unruly. Um, it may be perception of crime. It may be real crime. But they don't come into the town because they're afraid. And if you could just explain why it is that we do not need a town centre police station um, or police hub. I know we have one in um, Belgrave, but I'm talking town centre, which we've already heard just recently is, is a hot spot. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's out of my powers. Firstly, um, we have got a police station in Tamworth. It's a Belgrave Fire and Police Station um, on Marlborough Way. So there is a, a location that we we people can go to to get support that's covered 24-7. So that's my first point. There is a police station within Tamworth. The positioning of that police station is out of my hands to some degree. 
well, completely out of my hands. However, um, it's about where public money is spent to a degree. So where do you put that police station that, that allows you the, the right location to deploy 24-7 um, police officers? Um, and that comes at a cost, uh, which policing in general probably can't afford quite yet. Um, but the, the town centre, the town centre is interest, in, an interesting one. I went to a town centre meeting a number of weeks ago, uh, and the data I looked at over the last six months suggests that the the crime, uh, whether it be public order or whether it be violence or or um, drug use, uh, was all over times of day. There's no specific time, so it's no no more dangerous to be in Tamworth at night as it is in the day, in reality. Uh, the second point I will make is, is yes, um, people are afraid to come into Tamworth um, or perceive it's dangerous to be in Tamworth. And as a result of that, what we, we've done is we've re-looked at what our neighbourhood team looks like. It's got a dedicated uh, PC uh, now. Um, we've reinvigorated safer nights for that nighttime economy and we've reintroduced specials doing licensing checks in order to do that. Uh, funding through um, drugs uh, will allow us to do some more proactive work in relation to passive drug stocks, all that will count towards um, increasing visibility and hopefully having that effect where um, people feel a little safer. Thanks very much for your explanation. I know it's, it's not uh, something you <laughs> particularly want, but um, it's fair to say, isn't it, the bottom line is cost. I think there's a part of it is cost as well um, and there's similar conversations around the fire service isn't there around where does the fire service best positioned um, from my perspective actually the Belgrave fire station allows us to respond quickly and effectively no matter where we are in the, in Tamworth um, if you look at the positioning of other uh, police stations whether that's Burton whether it's Hanley different geography makes it a little more difficult but but from Tamworth's perspective we can get anywhere within the the area in really good time in fact it's backed up by our response times both on grade one responses for emergencies and grade two where we perform better than the mo uh, the rest of the force so when we need to get there urgently um, we perform the best in the force thanks Rob Thank you for that. I can't let this go without saying something, can I? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I completely understand the geography because I was lucky enough to be part of the team when we were looking at the new fire stations. And where that is um, located is absolutely right that it's so easy to get everywhere within the town in a very short amount of time. And that's good for both the fire service and for the police. The issue that everybody is concerned about whether rightly or wrongly and it may be perception is having somewhere and I, I don't know how to put it somewhere to run to maybe you know it, especially from perspective of a woman not that I go into town very much anymore at night but you know it, it's that thing of having somewhere to go and knock on the door or better still have an open door that you can go in and if there's a complaint and it, I know it's very difficult and you can't just have we, we, we could never keep that building as it was because it you know it's another mommy in house isn't it it's too big for for the use and it wasn't that long ago that we had a front inquiry office at Tamworth uh, uh, for those very reasons uh, and the re on the review in relation to the closure of those um, front offices when Tamworth was there was it wasn't being used so even though there is a police station there, it wasn't being used. Um, the majority of people that came to that police station were either answering bail or, or answering an MCI appointment, which we can do at the moment. So those general knock-ons were very few and far between. So, so yes, I understand that the, the security and reassurance of having a police hub that's 24-7 in the town centre would give, but the reality is that that doesn't then show itself in the amount of people attending the police station. Okay, I'm going to bring you in, um, Councillor Summers, just to 
to finish from my perspective for this, I mean, I, I would see that we would need to maybe do some co-location to make anything like this viable. And I have had occasion to go to the police station two or three times myself. So I know that people do walk in there for certain things. So, it, yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult one and we're not going to solve it tonight, Councillor Summers. Thank you. I'm sure it's been heard before, but it bugs me immensely that people say that there's not a fire station. It's like saying uh, fire station and police station, um, mainly the police station, obviously. Um, it bugs me immensely because it's not helping anything. It's like saying that the council doesn't have a front desk, but we won't go into that one, shall we? Um, there is a police station, and um, let, let's kill the myth that nobody couldn't turn up there now and say, I've got a problem. Because I've been there, I've seen it, there's an intercom on the front door, isn't there, Rob? It, and, and if somebody was in desperate need, it's not like the police are going to stare out the window at you and go, ha ha, <laughs> you know, I'm not coming to help you. No, uh, but that's the, that's what's being portrayed. And that's very damaging to the, to the reputation of the police who don't deserve it. And it's very harmful to those who think that they can't get the help when they need it. it, it it's, it's not right in the slightest. And as we've seen, as, as we've heard, the data didn't bear it out that the police station in town, which was closed sometime before, had uh, it didn't have anybody turn up to, to, to the front desk uh, to, to use it in that manner. And, you know, Tamworth Town Centre is not the Wild West. It is not dangerous. It is not scary for people to go there. It's your, your, your perception of it is, if you haven't even bothered to walk into the town centre and check it out for yourself, you have no right to even make that assertion or and, and make it sound like it's you know some kind of dangerous, scary place to walk. I'm still of the age where occasionally I go out there and uh, you know and, and have a, a night out, and it's been great. I mean, with the street angels and, and who we've got out um, and about, and especially I've been out on the community uh, partnership safe safe for nights and super safe for nights. I've seen it. It's fantastically well looked after. The place is an it, Tamworth is a good place to go of an evening. There's no tr no trouble, and those that do cause it are dealt with, and the police can get there immediately. We've seen though that the, in in you know in those intervening minutes, seconds, whatever, the door staff that are there are, are professional. Um, obviously, they're licensed by Tamworth Borough Council as well, but th those door staff do a great job of dealing with anybody, punters in the, in the clubs or pubs, that do cause trouble. And, you know, there is a heat map on the town centre because, yeah, that's where people congregate. They get a bit drunk, Larry, but the fact there's a heat map shows that those crimes have been detected, dealt with, and sorted out. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on the heat map, would they? Um, they wouldn't be on the figures. They're not just, you know, get th you know, figures out of thin air. They they are the result of policing and partnership work happening, and dealing with these incidents as they happen. So really, I think the myth that there's no police station needs to die, because it is so harmful and ridiculous. It, it's beyond a joke now, and we've been banging on about it since the police have been up at Marlborough Way. There's absolutely no need. For it. Sorry. Everybody acknowledges that there is a police station. The issue that people have is every every bus, whatever, doesn't go to Belgrave. It's about how people can get to somewhere that they need to go. And that's why there has been this outcry that people would like to see something in the town centre. And also, I, I don't think it's quite fair not to acknowledge that people are allowed to have fears. Yes, I, I, I actually go into town to pick my husband up most weekends. So I, I go through the town, I see that it's quiet, I drive all the way through the town. Most of the time there are a few people about, Larry, but on the whole it's quiet and I have not seen any problems. But some people still have that perception and we can't say to them they're wrong unless we do something about getting that message out there and, and making sure that they know that it's safe. And I'm not quite sure how we do that because it probably isn't so much a Tamworth problem, it's what they see on the news of other places and they just think that that is us. 
Rob? So, so just to try and try and finalise that, I suppose, is what what is my commitment to that? My commitment is to have more visibility that's within my ability to give within the town centre. As I say, I've, I've dedicated an officer there. I've got dedicated PCSOs there. I've dedicated staff on a Friday and Saturday and wherever re required. So I'm hopeful that the licensed premises will come back to you and say, yes, we are seeing more police, that we're working together clo more closely. And I'm hopeful that you'll come back in a year's time and be able to say, yes, there has been an increase in police presence uh, because that's, that's what I want to happen. And wherever possible, we will have a visibility in the town centre as well as all the other locations that may be causing an issue at any given time. So the commitment's there um, to have personnel in and around and available. Um, but I can't commit to a, a location because that's not within my powers. I can commit to having officers in, around and available. And there is a thing about if something else goes off. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Summers, you wanted to come back. Yeah, thank you. So yes, um, people do have fears. But the overwhelming message from people in response uh, in positions of responsibility and power is that there isn't a police station at all and that's perpetuated as a myth on social media all the time so that's that's what's wrong and in terms of the location of the police station so it was open in the town center i flip your argument on the head and say well what about those people on the outskirts of town where do they run to it makes no difference where it is. The police are at the end of a phone call. And if you lived in Belgrave, how would you have run to the town centre to go to the reception desk? There aren't buses everywhere. That is a straw man argument. It was completely and utterly invalid. People have fears, but they're perpetuated by people telling them that they don't, you know, oh, the town centre's dangerous. Oh, you can't go in there. Because we've heard that tonight. We've heard the town centre's dangerous. We've heard there's no police station. Well, that's what people here in this room who are in power and elected by people have said. That's what they'll take from it. Well, that's what needs to stop because people's perceptions are wrong and we need to change them. And it doesn't help the police. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't make anybody feel safe to tell them these falsehoods. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Summers, and I agree with you, we have to change people's perceptions, it's about how we do it. Um, sorry guys, but um, I do have a few questions. Um, the New Era Victim Service, can you just tell me the supported victims, the 1382, are they ours, is that a Tamworth figure? That is a Tamworth figure, yeah, that's over the, the first three years of the um, contract. Yeah, that's 1,392 people supported. supported. Yes, yes, that is. That's I mean, obviously, it would. it's a very a variety of ways that it's supported. It could just be um, advice, guidance. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things that the, the domestic violence advisors take victims through. Um, you know, and it could just be as, as much as simple guidance and advice. So that, but that is the, that is, and obviously this is from the um, first set of sister figures and we can certainly give some of that. Some of those will be repeats. Of that. Yeah, and some of them, sorry, yeah, and some of them will be repeats as well. So yes, they might come yes. back. Yeah. yeah. I understand that. Um, yeah, I mean, that just shows how much that's needed, doesn't it? That is... A massive figure, really. And I think what they've re the reporting is that they may well have more demand on those services. Certainly, you know, as you encourage victims to to report in for domestic um, violence, that there needs to be the outlet. So, you, yeah, mm -hmm. that's around again back to the perception. But you know, the more you try and encourage, obviously, the demand may. But it's really important to make sure that yeah. um, victims do actually report. And, uh, yeah, the word gets out and people know where they can go then, don't they? So that's really good. Um, one of the my other things was the pub watch thing. Do we have buy-in from everyone? And the knife crime awareness in the five schools, would that be high schools? Yes. So is that all of the high schools? That's... That is the that, that's the, high the that's the five that's the high schools in Tamworth. Yes, it is, and that does include the pupil referral unit as well. So that that was in all schools. That was a lady by the name of Alison Cope, who um, whose son had sadly been a victim of knife crime, 
Um, so, you know, we are looking, there is some um, new money that's become available um, through the serious violence duty, which is a, the need for all public authorities to work together for serious violence. Um, and there is some extra money for Tamworth. There's some £5,000 come through um, to the, the myself and the police um, and my, my team um, need to look at to see where we can actually if it means that we need to bring Alison Cope back or something to the schools, it may be just advice for, for parents. It's We have noted sometimes that the gap around young people, and it, not just knife violence, not just serious violence, that include, say includes county lines, is the lack of awareness of parents sometimes, yeah. what they do, what how to recognise if their children are becoming exploited. So there's some additional money for that, so we'll be looking at that. And the pub watch scheme... Um, not all licensed premises are signed up to it. Um, they don't have to be. There's no reason. But there are. I think. I think Rob. The, the probably I would say a majority of the town centre licensed premises are part of that pub watch scheme and have that radio, which again links up to the, the CCTV. Yeah. Thank you for that, Joe. I just wonder if if there is some additional money. Because in primary schools, we're talking of 10 and 11 year olds who could quite easily be falling into this. I mean, we see that all the time, don't we? That the, the age group is coming down. It, it's about capturing yeah. early, isn't it? And that's primarily the reason for a community safety partnership. We're recognising it's not just ourselves, it's not just the police, it's not just FARS. It does involve social services, the safe adult and children safeguarding teams. Uh, the housing teams or the registered so, um, um, pro providers. So it, it's around what, like Rob's alluded to, those problem-solving approaches. If we've got a problem, who is best to do it within the community safety partnership? Who leads on it? What are the outcomes and what are we trying to resolve? So, yeah, that you know, th those will be considered. Um, and there is actually at the County Council a um, PHSE, the public health and social education um, officer that is employed or funded through the commissioner who are trying to do those educational programs for kids across all primary schools yeah uh, and again P again pcso's are regularly in schools doing those pshe uh, inputs as well has anybody got any did you want to speak councillor harper but no, it was. It was a, I was just going to respond to Councillor Summers, who said, um, and his comments, basically just to say that we are councillors and we are here to represent our constituents, people who tell us their worries, their fears, and things that they are concerned about, and it is our job to express them and ask questions. That's why we're here, and um, this is a question that we were asked about particularly with concern to the town centre. Belgrave is a, a different issue, different place. But um, I think you've answered, uh, you've answered where we are on that. Thank you. I did think I was having a really easy time up until that. So, <laughs> but, but, so I thank you all. <laughs>
on that. Has everybody read the annual report? Oh, yes, Council <laughs> Clark. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. There's just a small error um, on the members for 22 23. Um, it should be Lee Wood instead of Lee Clark. Yeah, me dad. Definitely wasn't on this committee. Yeah, and also on that, it says that um, retirement from the committee was November 2024. That, was, that would have been 2023 when I replaced <laughs> Lee Wood. <laughs> Thank you. At this point, I think I'd like to say thank you to all of those people who've been on the um, committee this year, and thank you to those three people who've moved on. Um, we None of us know who will be here next time, so. <laughs> but it, I think, we, <laughs> well, some of us know who won't be here next time, yes. I, I think... And I hope everybody who has been on the committee all the time feel that we've got through quite a lot. It has been a busy year. We've um, sent things up to Cabinet and asked for our recommendations to be looked at, some of which have and some of which haven't quite got there yet. But um, so on to our... Oh, right, a mover for the annual report, Mr Clark and Councillor Luke, uh, Smith. All those in favour? Yeah. So I've done that then, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> right, so item 10, the forward plan. Do we have anything that we want to take through to next time's committee? No? So item 11, um, working group updates. We have had a meeting of the Migrant Travellers um, working group and Apologies, Joe. I have quite a list of things that we talked about and that we'd like to um, have some information on. We, we're having another meeting at the beginning of April, so I will come to you with those things that we're looking at. But it was really, um, it was really informative, wasn't it? Uh, Councillor Claymore is part of our group, and she had done such a lot of research for it. It was really good. She'd come with a lot of information. And the next day, she was going to go and view the... Um, the site at Alvercote to see how that it works because one of the things that we were looking at is is um, whether we could have a site and I know Councillor Summers did at one point mute the fact that we were looking at those options so that would be part of the stuff that we go forward on. Um, the ISAG work plan do we have anything on that? No, not really. Obviously, we haven't got another meeting. Yeah. Because so, yeah. we're at the end of the year. Sorry. Um, the HGV thing. Yes. We're trying to get a date, aren't we, before the end have, of the year? Yeah, I have emailed out. I'm, I'm waiting for a response from both Me, bodies. yes. Both yes, yeah, me. I'll hold my hand up. I've yes. seen it twice no, and me. still not managed to find that space in the diary. I will do that by the end of the week. Thank you. Because if we can get... At least some of this stuff started by the end of the municipal the year. That will be good. So, yes. Yeah. So, we are, we are where we are with work plan then. So, we now move on to item 13, exclusion of the press and public. And let's just hope my voice holds up for this. We're now move, we will now move to consider excluding the press and public from the meeting by passing the following resolution. That in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England Regulations 2012 and Section 100A.4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disco disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph three of schedule one paragraphs three of part one of schedule 12a to the act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public can i have a mover please add a seconder all those in favor yeah we are